Welcome to GHM Academy's webinar series. In this webinar, you will learn about creating a classroom, sharing lessons with your classes, how to teach using free GHM lessons in your class, and an overview of content partners and their channel. Welcome. This is our first GHM Academy webinar. So we are very pleased to be welcoming all you to visit with us and to join in to learn about GHM Academy. Um, so my name is Monica. Um, and we are joined today by Martin Pond, who is MPO CEO. So I'm the communications officer at MPO Educational Enterprise and Martin is the CEO. Today, we are going to go over GHM Academy, which is a learning management system. So this is an LMS and an LMS is a program that helps track um, learning and helps teach easily and you, while using lessons and tracking student progress. So it's a, a learning management system that works to help teachers and students learn in a better way. So today we're covering the topic of teaching with free GHM lessons in your classroom. So learning about lessons and learning about classrooms. First, we want to cover a little bit of history of educational enterprises or MPO. So MPO was formed with the idea of creating educational material to help students learn, especially through time and space. So with the history and their locations, that's where it all started from. We did this first through a series of three paper maps showing three different time periods. So we focused on history. Um, however, as it was on paper, due to time uh, size constraints on the paper, we couldn't list all the historical events that we wanted. So we had to narrow them down to 100 events, which was a little bit difficult to do. But while we were creating the map, someone mentioned to us, wouldn't it be great if this was online? And we thought, yes, it would. Wow, this would solve all our problems of needing to restrict history to 100 events. So we started to look into how to turn paper maps into an online interactive map. We didn't just want a boring static map that already existed um, because it wouldn't be engaging for students. It wouldn't, it wouldn't help them learn in a, in a way we wanted them to learn. So we checked and there was nothing like what we already wanted that existed. So therefore we started looking into technology that could do what we wanted and found that, lucky for us, new programming had just been released that enabled us to do what we wanted to do. And that was to relate both time and space in an interactive way. So we started developing our program and created this amazing program you'll see today. It's a great resource. So in starting this program, um, this process, our program has gone through a number of different iterations. First with the beta version released in 2017, called Geohistory Map or GHM. And this was focused on history. Then in 2019, we created the commercialized version of GHM. And this was released in 2019. And then in 2020, we rebranded GHM to GHM Academy because we had added more functionality that enabled many subjects, not just history, to be able to be entered in. So it's no longer just a geohistory map, but now it's GHM Academy, which can cover many subjects. Then in 2021, GHM started having content partners join us. So we before were creating lessons, but now we have others creating lessons as well inside GHM. So now GHM can be used for subjects as diverse as math, history, French, geography, science, whatever person can think of to enter, they can enter it in. So now we continually are upgrading and improving the user experience. So not only are we entering more content and getting more content partners to join, but we are also making this, the program better and better and improving it to have more functionalities that'll be making the user experience even better. So a bit of history about Martin, he has had many decades, lots of time where he's, he has worked on many different types of programs and used them to teach students. He worked at Mad Science, he worked at Space Camp Cosmodrome and, and a number of other companies where he created educational programs um, to teach students in unique educational ways. They were very hands-on programs, programs that engage the students. So this, our program, GHM, can be seen as just a continuation of what he has done in the past, helping students learn in an interactive way. But this project started because his son said history was boring one day. And since Martin loves history, this created a very strong motivation in him to, to make something that students would enjoy and would find engaging and interesting so that history would not need to be boring. Um, and so this, you will see, he truly succeeds in this accomplishment because GHM Academy makes learning much more interesting than, than, than just 
a regular textbook would. GHM Academy is a program that engages students, causes them to discover the facts and raise their interest in the subject being taught. So whether it's history or science or even French, GHM presents the subject in unique ways that allows the user or the student to be interested in the subject. And this causes students to learn better, retain the information and have a much more improved performance reporting that can be, can be tested and tracked. So now I pass it off to Martin and he can continue. So um, right here, we have GHM Academy where you find three different sections. Um, it's an LSM like Monica was sharing uh, a few minutes ago and it permits us to create lessons online and also to manage classrooms and create our own classrooms using either lessons that are already exist or lessons that you can create from scratch. Bookroom is actually relatively simple. You can go straight into the bookroom and then you can see all the different lessons that are available. And then from here, you can pick and you can take a look at a lesson that's available and go through it with your child or with your students. And these, you can make them available by basically creating a classroom on pressing on classroom. Once you create a classroom, you basically will be able to add students. And I'm just going to create a classroom quickly here. I'm gonna call it classroom number two. And then you can basically create a code. This code will permit the students to add themselves directly to this specific classroom. You save it. And then as you save it, you will notice new tabs appear. You will have users you will have content, you will have licenses and quizzes. In the user, this is where you will manage your users. And this is where you can add a user if you want to directly without having to give them a code. You put their first name, last name, a username. Usernames should always, uh, should not contain, sorry, special characters, should always be letters or numbers. And the same thing for passwords. Very important that they only contain um, either letters or numbers. They could be capital, it's not a problem, but we would recommend to use it this way. Once users have added themselves, they basically will appear. And as uh, I will show you when I log in as a teacher, I will show you that quickly later on. To add content, it's very simple. You basically select um, the events that you, the lessons that you would like to add to that classroom. So I can add this one, this one, this one. And of course you can see the big green check mark that shows that those are the ones that you have selected. And by pressing save, you will now add them to that classroom. To see your selections, you basically press on the tab select. And these are the three lessons I've selected for this classroom. Only these lessons will be visible to the students. So the students will be focusing specifically on these classrooms. If I want to add more lessons, I basically go to add more lessons, select more. I can even search according to different provinces that I want to. So let's say Quebec grade seven, then I have found the lessons that are related to Quebec's grade seven curriculum. I can now simply select them and then save and they will be added to my classroom. As you can see, they're added. If I wanna remove them, I simply press on them again and they will disappear. And then I just need to save my selections that are left. And that is only what the students will see. So I will sign up quickly as a teacher to show you what a teacher looks like. And once they have a classroom created, this is my classroom. I will select my class 301. I have several classrooms, I have five. So since I've selected this one, then I can go into my users and here you can see the users and I can go directly into my users to see their profile, to see the licenses that are attached to them or the quizzes that they've completed and I can even go and take a look at a quiz and see the results or see what they've done. I can even write a note to the student and send it to the student to let them know um, if they did a good job or what they need to work on. Or I can go to the quizzes here and see all the quizzes that were done 
by the students in that classroom. Creator is located over here. That is the third one. And in Creator, it gives you the ability to create lessons. We're going to have a webinar um, in a later date to show you exactly how Creator works. But if you have uh, questions uh, in the future, you can always look uh, in our videos that we have created to be able to find the information. Now I'm going to return back to our presentation. And from here, I will go to the next, tape, next page. Is that uh, the way that uh, learning with GHM Academy is a little different. It permits students not to be as distracted, right? It gives them um, the ability to do the work that they need to do in a specific amount of time, right? Um, sometimes they will find certain tasks very boring and difficult to do. And this is where GHM comes in to help those things out. Sometimes they may even feel that they're overwhelmed and they can't do something. So this is why um, we have considered these things in GHM to help students not to feel overwhelmed. And some other times they actually may finish things even faster than they had actually um, thought that they would. So they need more information they need more uh, things to do. And often children may be very motivated at a specific time and less motivated at other times. So GHM Academy helps them to actually channel that motivation at that time and at that moment. So this is what we want to do with GHM is really solve the issues with these five major problems that students have when they're learning. And so how do we do this is by the way our documents are structured. Our documents are structured in a way as we find workbooks. Often when you would look at digital technologies such as um, you know, Google Classrooms, people would dump you know, uh, information such as Word documents, Excel documents, even um, you know, different types of style of, um, of, uh, of quizzes that you can do and YouTube videos and so on and so on. So students, not only they're stuck to have to learn how to basically learn their information, they also have to learn how to use all these different types of um, styles of presentation. So it's, the student is not just focusing on what they're learning, but they're focusing on also on how do I get to learn these things? How do I use these things? And how, how do I need to learn these things? So it becomes very distracting for the students and spending a lot of energy instead of spending the energy on learning what they're supposed to be learning. So their workbook style structures is actually built in, um, in this way so that it will focus the student by basically having, you know, just like a book, a cover, explaining to the student what they need to do and what they need to learn in that side of the cover by seeing it with an image, a picture and saying, oh, this is what I'm going to be doing today. And then as you open it, every page that's inside is an independent page. And those pages, right, can be structured in a, uh, in a, um, in an organized way. And the such, such as maybe in a timeline. So if you're teaching history, maybe you want to teach um, history in a chronological way. So then the first page would be talking about an event that happened, the second would be the second event and so on and so on and so on. So it's really important to understand that these things that you see, you know, when you're working with a workbook, it helps them understand every time when they're turning the page, that things and events are following one another. It's not basically, you know, documents that I give you to the left and to the right, and then the students kind of have to put all of this together. But with a workbook, it actually helps them. And how does it help them? It permits them to have a presentation that is logical and chronological. The students are able to contextualize and understand the concepts in time and space to develop opinions that better understand the information that is presented to them. GHM's goal, right, by producing this lesson is to increase the knowledge base of students, help students find the information, give a diverse types of information that they can use and see. 
And the next portion, I'm going to take another five minutes to explain it in French. We're going to be talking about exactly how you learn, how you learn in a classroom environment. Okay, so I was here relating to um, the documents and how the documents were structured. And that's what we were just talking about before. So here we are now, how these documents are not just structured, but how do the students get to basically live and do this and use this information while they're basically at home or in the classroom and they're doing these exercises and learning. Well, the advantage of using GHM, like we were talking before, is that you don't simply have a, um, a program that you basically dump a whole bunch of different information from different um, apps. What you have is you have one app with the ability to do all this information. So you can basically listen to a video, um, a YouTube video. You can have access to maps that are uh, interactive. You can basically go and visit inside a museum or use Google Street View directly into the lesson. You have images that are embedded. And of course, you have small byte text, uh, sorry, small text that are bite-sized so that are easy to understand for the students so they don't get overwhelmed and to be able to verify, you know, their ability to create, a, a, to be able to verify their understanding, you can do auto-corrected quizzes. And from there, you'll be able to get the information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick lesson so you guys, you can see what the lesson looks like. And so I'm gonna start with one specific one that's uh, very interesting is the one on the Nature Museum. The Nature Museum is basically a lesson that permits you to um, visit the museum in a virtual way. Actually, if um, you want to, you can actually sign up on GHM Academy and try out this lesson yourself by going to the channel of the Nature Museum. So here you have the Nature Museum and I'm just gonna kind of play. I know you can't hear what he's going to be saying, but this is basically a presentation of the inside of the Canadian Museum. And as he's talking, you can actually scroll through the museum. So you can actually follow where he's talking about. You can look around. So you're listening, but you're also seeing and you're controlling. And then you can even go to the larger image and he's still talking in my ear. You guys are not hearing it, but he's actually still talking. And that means I can still follow him where he is in the museum. The nice part is, is that sometimes, you know, as you know, they're talking, maybe, you know, a student will wander away or, you know, go somewhere else. The nice part is that you just need to turn the page and it will bring you back to where the lesson is supposed to be. And then you can just keep turning the page and I'm back exactly at the place, you know, where he was talking about the T-Rex. And then if, if he goes on and he's talking about, you know, the Edmontosaurus, I'm right there. And this is kind of a neat way of being able to visit the museum. I have the information that's right here. Plus I have links, but we're going to talk a little bit about that a little uh, later about links and the information and how those are linked. The next lesson that I'm going to do here is one that's related to the program um, of Quebec. And this one is basically on grade seven. So I'm going to pick grade seven. Now, each lesson that we produce is produced with um, the intent that the students understand exactly what they're learning. So this one first always has a sort of a call it chapter zero and which it gives the student and the parent or the teachers exactly the objectives that they need to learn. And then this is in chapter one, what they need to learn, chapter two and so on and so on. So then once we come into the chapter one, which is one of the lessons here, we already have an idea of what am I supposed to be learning here? And again, here's another style of mapping ability. This is actually mapping the uh, territory where the settlements of the, um, at the period, sorry, at the period of, in English, it's the Paleotics mm. or Paleostics. 
I have problems pronouncing it in English. So sorry about that. But that's where the first, you know, uh, people in the sense of this area started creating settlements. And that is a drawing. So the student has a bit of an idea. They can also make the map full size. And then they can actually click on the map to see, you know, other information that's available there on the map if you want to. So I just went and I just jumped quickly. Sorry about that. It just kind of jumps to the next. If you go on the map, it will actually bring you directly to a less a to the portion of the lesson. Like this is number three, page number three, as I press on the map directly. We can also do quizzes. As I said, you know, this is a great way to evaluate students quickly. So this permits them to have an idea of what they're learning and how they're learning. And once they've done it, um, as I did here, I just wrote my name, Martin, as the answer. That's, of course, not the answer for that uh, question. But we get the answer that they should have filled out. So then the student's able to evaluate themselves and see what's going on. And from here, they're able to say, hey, you know, I got the wrong answer and why, and then go back into the text, understand what's going on. And then from this point, they're able to better understand how they need to learn and what they need to learn. So, and they can do it again and again and again. That's kind of nice because it gives them the confidence at one point to be able to do something more than once and not be, uh, if you want to penalize <clears throat> in this way. So this gives us an idea related to how to learn with GHM in the classroom. And I'm just gonna ask you if you have any questions so right now, this is mostly all for Canada. Yes, mostly we have the Canadian stuff in right now. We have Quebec pretty much finalized. We're working on, on Ontario's half done. Manitoba is, is partially done. And we're going to be working on some of the Maritimes next. Um, this That's for the history side. Yeah. Uh, we have other lessons in that cover different topics, um, such as, you know, there are some geography as well in there like the, the, for example, the Canadian Museum of Nature is entering in um, Canadian natural history. Um, we have other, mu other organizations entering different subjects like the Rick Hansen, which enters um, inclusion and accessibility lessons. So there are a number of other lessons that, um, uh, that are, are also in there that are not just about you know, curriculum based. Um, we do have a lot of general type of lessons as well. So um, you can find many other different subjects. For example, this past month, we did one on um, the black history. We have some French lessons in there. Um, and so for many different other topics and subjects, they're also in there, um, depending on you know, what it is you would like to, to have entered in. Um, so as you see, we have different, le different lessons that are available. Um, so the history, for, for example, for the American history, we do have some, but it's not listed um, directly. We have it under, um, you know, there's, there's, you know, history of the states, history of explorers, the First Nations history, um, history of Canada, of course, the World Wars, United States. So they're just not listed in a curriculum-based fashion, so you can find them just under the subject category. Um, I'm just going to really show you this quick lesson. There's one that's produced by Black Biblio, and uh, this one actually has a game inside it, so it's kind of cool. You can actually play a game. So if you go, it's a matching game. So we're going to be getting more and more of these styles of uh, lessons that are going to have games integrated inside. So this is also something for new. So as you can see, we have the different channels, and those are the different partners, the content partners that are putting in content in, and they are continually adding stuff. So you can always find new things. Um, and then there's also, as Martin was mentioning, by category, you can search for different topics by category and find different kind of, um, different kind of subjects. Just one last thing, just so uh, people understand, where do we get all our material from? So just to let you know, the information that we've produced are always validated by experts, either by um, university professors, such as in Black, the Black History was done by a PhD university teacher from Concordia that specialized in Black history. Um, the ones that are, of course, produced by the Nature Museum are produced by a museum with very high skilled employees and all the lessons that we produce that are educationally related to 
curriculum are produced with educators and teachers that uh, understand very well the curriculums that they're teaching in and have been vetted and verified. So you can really feel safe by using this information that it's been verified and you won't end up with something that is, you know, out of norm, but it does follow the norms that um, should be taught in, uh, in school or to your child or student. Thank you very much for attending our webinar today. And if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. And we hope you'll be able to join us for our next webinar, tentatively scheduled right now for March 26th, then talk on another subject, maybe even GHM Creator. Follow us on our blog at ghmacademy.com. We'll also be posting the information there. Thank you and take care. Bye-bye. For more information about GHM Academy, go to ghmacademy.com. If you like this video, don't forget to press the button subscribe and also like. Thank you.